Okay, everybody, we are back in the Arctic boat shop here up in the Great White North. If you're just joining us, we are building a 1 8 scale racing hydroplane. It will look very similar to this one right here, only be much better. Yes, uh, that's the plan. You can build this as a nitro or electric powered hydroplane. That one is electric. It used to be nitro. If you've been following along, again, this is video uh, number three in the series. So if you're just joining us for the first time, cool, glad you're here. But go back, um, watch number one and number two. I will create a playlist. If you go to my channel and you click the playlist tab or whatever, the playlist will come up there and uh, you can just run the whole thing. Okay, so I'm catching you up now. By now you should have built all of your uh, interior frame pieces. Together we built our first one with a nice shape. We copied that onto the other components. These remain squared, just an inch and a half further forward. Uh, by the way, to create this nose here for the bull nose, I used that piece that we hacked off earlier, and I moved it forward an inch and a half, and then I just uh, sanded this upper portion to kind of match the way that looked. Does that, I don't know if you can see it. Does that make some sense? And, and that way we know that our, uh, our cowling will fit that um, really, really nicely. Uh, so we're going to have a little bit of fun here, but uh, gosh, like I said, I've got so much I want to tell you. And then I have some questions for you that we'll get to near the end here because I am not 100% sure what to do on one piece of this, but I think I know. Uh, I just, I took the dogs for a walk today and then I took a shower and I don't know about you, but I solve a lot of the world's problems while I'm in the shower. Apparently I think well in there. No idea how long I was in there, but... I think I have an awesome idea. So we're gonna do a, a quick faux assembly here for two reasons. One is it's really fun. Um, the second one is because I wanna show you the thing that I have in mind. Here's our transom. You will notice the transom if you're building this kit, if you're following along, the two pieces, you're going to laminate these together to create a quarter inch thick transom, which is, which is a good idea. And, and it'll make it super nice and strong laminating these together. But you'll see these pieces are different. Uh, two notches on the top, an extra notch here, and Mike has thoughtfully marked these in the kit, burf and burb, and bloof and bloob. B piece, which lines up with B on the back of these pieces, uh, right hand side of it, the forward piece, front piece, burb back, okay? It'll all make sense when you're actually putting it together. But this, um, let's see. This will tuck in here. Only on this one, not on this one. It'll make sense here in a moment. Since we cut our cool squares in our replacement floor, this should, if we've been living right. Mm, 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 mm. That's a good fit. Go in there. Uh, we're, let's make sure that it stays put nicely. Again, this is all faux. You're actually gonna be removing this floor before we start gluing it together. Removing it from the jig, and then we're gonna put wax paper underneath it all so that we don't glue everything down to the jig. Uh, okay, that's really not holding straight. Of course, we will use a square when we put that together. Now, here's how this one goes in. You see that notch there tucks into this piece here. Oh, it's starting to make sense to me now. Uh, why is that? Why is this offset this direction? The engine well of this boat is offset to the left. Now that's the outside of our race course. And I get asked this question all the time. Why, why offset it to the outside? And people think I'm crazy. Uh, but most of that comes, I think, uh, from you race car guys. Because what do you do on a race car, a roundy round car? It's always turning left, and so you put a whole bunch of weight on the left-hand side of the race car because you want to weight those left side tires. And you go into the turn, you, you, you want those tires to be doing something, right? So you, so you put as much weight as you can on the left, and then you roll across the scales, and the inspector tells you, you, you know, you've got 59%, that's 1% too much, and you move weight around. Anyway, uh, and that makes good sense. That, that makes really, really good sense. Uh, the difference is here though, you're running a race boat and we're turning to the right and you think, okay, well, I'm gonna put a bunch of weight on the right-hand side to weight the turn fin. No, the fin, 
I mean, it's there to hold the water and it's angled if you've been living right and building things right. And this thing is gonna hold just fine. That's not a problem. The problem that we have with these boats is the directional rotation of the motor is this way, which means the hull tries to go this way. If you look at almost every blowover you ever see of these things, left sponson coming up first. Left sponson comes up first, catches a little bit of air and away you go. Uh, no, we offset stuff that way. And you have to remember also, we're gonna have turn fin hardware and so on hanging out on this side. So there's weight over here. We're gonna set our fuel tanks on this side. There's weight over here. So we need to offset some of the stuff slightly left. The motor on my eighth scales, I go one quarter inch to the left of center line in my eighth scales on my motor. And then of course the cowling sits over there. So if, if the boat is heavy on one side or the other, it needs to be that outside, okay? It's not a problem. Lee Robertson a million years ago told me it's a tetherball effect. He said a tetherball swings really nicely because the weight is way outside of its pivot point, right? And then I, and I thought, well, yeah, but it seems to accelerate as it gets closer to the pivot. So I'm not sure that makes sense. I've been struggling with that all of these years. But the lifting idea does make sense to slightly weigh the left. Now, it's not going to be brutal. I mean, it's just if anything, ever so slightly heavier on the outside, definitely not the inside or your boat's going over. And then I'm just going to, I'm going to go right by you as that thing's up in the air doing a big giant flip. And I'll say, see ya. Uh, okay, so let's put some more pieces in here. Uh, CLCR. Mike so kindly marks these things. Oh, it's awesome. If I wasn't a weirdo and had to modify everything, we'd have this boat done right now. But oh, wait till you see the plans I have for you next. Uh, here we have uh, Herb and Earth. Makes no difference. These are exactly the same. Uh, it's just E, and that means up here, E, for Herb and Earth. Bear with me, I'm gonna be making a point here in a minute. I'm not talking about the one on top of my head, neither. Okay, that pushes down in, that I think went in. That's nice. Here we have Derb and Durf. Totally unnecessary, by the way. These could be 1 8 inch instead of laminated and quarter inch and all that. It's, it's really just not needed. And I'm gonna cut most of it away. You'll, you'll see when we get there a whole lot of this. Boy, that one is super tight. I think it's going in. We just might file those holes slightly larger. Oh, there it went in. Oh, that's awesome. Look at that, boat's done. <laughs> okay, here's our modified right side. Oh, let's put our, uh, let's talk about this. This is our bull nose. Here's what I want you to do. If you've been doing my modifications, if you're following along with me, you're gonna use these two with the tabs. You can see it's offset, right? See how that, okay, this, the front here, obviously, I guess, because these hook in here. <clears throat> okay, I want you to use two in the middle, lay two on the top, three underneath. All right, trust me, that's what we're doing for right now. Uh, this should notch in here. I don't, I have not, um, well, yeah, no, hang on. I'll talk about that in a minute. That'll fit on that tab. This is supposed to fit on that tab. And this goes in here. One of the reasons that we're building the Eliminator is the back section is just perfectly square. Uh, makes it really easy. A lot of hydroplanes, the, the, the midsection of the rear hull is higher. You know, and so everything, uh, uh, making these sorts of modifications is, is a whole lot trickier. Doable, but trickier. Okay. So, see, that's fun. It feels good. You say, oh my gosh, I'm doing the right thing. It all kind of works. Lines up real nicely here. Remember, we've got four of these former bullnose pieces just stacked up underneath there for right now. Now, here's, here's what we gotta do next. Okay, we've talked a little bit about these pieces here. This mounts here. Here is where, oh, should have one here. 
Here is where our sponson transom would mount if we were smart and we were gonna leave the boat kit alone. We're not. We're gonna move this forward one inch, so leave this one in place. Doesn't matter. I mean, even if you punched it out, it, it, it's no big deal. But we're gonna make a mark, we're, we're gonna make a slot one inch further forward. This was our former bull nose, remember that doesn't matter. We're going to cut a new um, notch, uh, a hole right here for the bull nose to fit into, right? Not yet though, and here's why. I've had a thought. Oh, this was it. This was the shower. It's not my fault. I don't know if you can tell by looking at this, the profile of this boat. The sponsons run up really high. I'm going to change it. I'm thinking if I slot the top of this hole, this piece can now drop down, thereby dropping my sponson tip down. Why? What's the point? Just because it looks different? No. It. Uh, you have to think about. Well, oh, let's look at. Uh, let's look at this boat. So imagine now. I hope you can see this. I mean, I'm just guessing. We're wearing this GoPro. It, when this thing's moving, here we go, we're going, you know, 65 miles an hour. And you're only, you're, you're just touching here. If, if you're doing it right, the, the boat just taps here as it goes in the water. So meanwhile, I have this surface that's inclined, right? Air pressure. We're trapping air right here. Same is true here. We're driving a whole bunch of air under here. And as you can see, even by the shape of this one, very little air is, is, is being affected here. It's basically just moving past. If we bring this down slightly, all of a sudden, it's not gonna be big pressure, but, but all of a sudden there's slight downward pressure here to counteract this lift here. And the speeds we're running now and the weight these things are, in fact, if you're building this right, you should come in uh, somewhere between 10 and a half to 11 and a half pounds. It's nothing, it's 65 miles an hour. I think we need that little bit of extra pressure here. Plus, I, I just don't like the look. I, I, think it's, I think it's too high as designed. So here we go. We're changing things again. We're gonna slot this slightly. And if you go too far, don't panic. We're going to adjust these when we glue them on uh, based upon the height of the tip of the sponsor. Uh, what do we got here? We're, we're roughly almost six and five eighths. And if I let it drop fully, only on the forward, remember we're retaining this one here and we're just gonna slot this guy. We went from six and five eighths to six and three eighths. So it came down a quarter of an inch. That kind of feels like a lot. I mean, this is a game of millimeters. So, so maybe I won't go quite that far, but uh, you, you know, something in that neighborhood there. And uh, again, I, I know it's a really small thing and it's gonna create a lot of work, but, but it might work. Um, okay, so if we're gonna do that, simple. I mean, I go in here with a square file and I go and bingo, this thing will drop. This surface here, as you can see now is at an angle. And so that'll have to get recut slightly because this needs to be flat. Here is where the tail end of the drop sections lives. Okay, like that. So this will have to get recut slightly. Not that big a deal, we can do it. And if you've been paying attention and you're, you're yelling at the screen right now going, wait, all that's moving forward. Yeah, oh yeah, it's all, it's all going forward, one inch. So what you're gonna do now what I'm gonna do now, and, and you can follow along, I'll just, and I know the video might be boring, but uh, if you wanna know, you wanna know. We're going to bring this whole section here forward, one inch. We're gonna make a new sponson transom mounting hole, one inch further forward. Paying, paying close attention to get it as square as we can. Even if uh, later we are going to square this when, when we, uh, before we glue it on. So if we have to, we can, we can slot that hole a little bit. So it's not, it's not a huge panic. 
uh, but get it as close as you can. So we're gonna move this forward. And as we talked about when we looked at that boat previously, I do not care for this shape. You can imagine the back of the sponson here. Uh, it's not where it's going to be, but uh, it's the where it's going to be in relation to how this material looks. It, it extends pretty straight and that makes a pretty hard bend right here downward. Uh, do not like that at all. That is definitely not scale. This is the outboard piece. Okay, this is our inboard here. This is our outboard section. Uh, and its shape I like. Uh, it needs to be sanded a little bit. It's got a high point right here. It's just by the way, I mean these things are CAD designed, you know, and, and so they're, they're just not flawless. You have to do some, some tweaking. So we're going to take and sand this high point. We'll do them together and we'll make that match, okay, so that this has a little bit more of a gradual slope. But then this whole section here, we're going to redraw it slightly and, and, and reduce this hump area here. But again, it has to come forward. So how are we going to do all that? Here's what we're going to do. We will simply line up on this one. Come forward one inch. Let's just do it. Just do it. Uh, too far. Uh, 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 it's so close. One inch. Now granted, we're going to recut this angle here slightly on this piece here, but I don't care for creating this drop section. And I'm just going to go ahead and draw it as is, and then we will make our cut to here. And from there, we will sand some sort of a decent arc that we might like. You're looking at this saying, oh my gosh, you're cutting right into that slot. Yeah, yeah, it'll work. Stick with me. I'll show you how to do it. Okay, let's just do this one. Okay, so that's replicating what we had, but bringing it forward. But I don't like the shape. Did you hear that? Jackson Brown, come on in here and say hi to everybody. Sorry, time out. Took him out for a nice walk today. Had to pry his jaws open. He found some sort of old moldy, bony something. Sit. Sit. All the way. All the way. Yes. Shake. Shake. No, well, no, close enough. Give me five. Yes. boy. Anyway. Yeah. Boy, we had a fight. Okay, so there it is. And I hate it. Uh, a couple of reasons I cut it badly. And the shape in general I don't like. Remember, we're going one inch further forward here anyway for the sponson transom. And then everything's happening beyond that. So let's sand that a little bit and see if we can make it something that we like a little better. I kind of like it. What do you think? Leave me a comment every now and then. Tell me if I'm doing this right. I think I like that. Let's compare it to what we had. Okay, can you, can you see that? We took that big old ugly hump right there out of it. I could probably go a little further but uh, I, I think I'm digging it. I think I'm digging it. All right. Now you'll cut this. <laughs> First you'll throw it on the ground and stomp on it. 
like the UPS driver. Okay, so that's awesome. Now you'll cut this one to match. Okay, the next things I want you guys to do. I should have done this before I, uh, before I uh, cut it. This slot right here, let's, let's look at this one now, needs to come forward one inch because this is this piece. It's just a support for that, uh, for this piece as it comes down, okay? Probably doesn't even need to be there. Same is gonna happen with this slot. Just go forward just exactly one inch. That's this piece. Okay. We've just changed it. This is going to have to come down in its height because of the sanding that we did here. Once this moves forward, that one inch, see how it's gonna be higher now? And that's fine, we can refine this later. But for right now, we gotta put this slot in. Okay, put this one in, it's gonna land right up here. It'll be fine, don't worry. Uh, well, let's look at it right now. You'll see what this winds up doing. This will land like this. And then we just simply dremel this extra little bit off here. And then when you, you know, put your upper material on and do your filling and painting, you'll never know that ever happened. Okay. Slot this ever so slightly. If you're following along, we are taking this tip. We're going to change this in a minute too, by the way. Of course we are. We're going from six and five eighths. I want it under six and a half. Maybe you go all the way down to six and three eighths or, or, or maybe uh, six and seven sixteenths or whatever that is. Uh, but I, I do want to bring that tip down just slightly. Again, you don't have to. If this is totally freaking you out, don't do it. But I'm going to do it. I'm going to slot this just a little bit. I'm going to bring this down just a little under six and a half. And then I will clamp this inner piece to this outer piece. We'll remove it all. And that will allow me to mark the location. I don't know if you can see this at all. For the hole, for those little tabs coming out of the bull nose. Okay. Did that make any sense? No. Well, let's just do it then. Okay, here we go. Great. Okay, let's make that line go away. six and a half. <whistles> six and seven sixteenths. That's my new spot. We need to reshape that bottom that bottom section, right? Oh, and this notch right here is gonna come forward one inch as well because that meets the back of the sponson transom. Sixteenth of an inch, yes? Yes. And one inch further forward. I'm pressing on it to kind of hold everything in place. full inch. Let's go a little further. Well, a little further than that. Don't be a wimp. Now when we cut this, we don't want to make this pencil line go away, right? That remains because this is going to slide underneath it. But that shows us the amount of material we need to remove. Let's, uh, let's mark this now so we know where to put this notch. Well, one inch further forward, right? But Okay, we're gonna use this guy. Yep, 
And you could really freak out over this if you wanted to. I'm going to angle it just ever so slightly. Uh, but you don't need to. When we, when we actually build our ride pads and stuff on our sponsons, hey, precisely where this lands, I don't care. We're going to check angles. We're going to check depths. It's where we mount our structure underneath that's going to control that. So don't, don't panic over this. I say that a lot, don't I? <laughs> don't panic. I, well, I worry that I'm freaking you guys out just because you never know, you know, how people feel about this kind of stuff. All right. That's one inch at the back. That's one inch at the back. One inch at the front. at the front. So this is where our slot's going to be. Again, that's that's a thing that we'll refine when we mount it. Okay. We cut this out. Right? And we cut this out. And we're going to wind up with that slot right there. Let's go. Man, that's tough. Whose idea was this? I kind of think I nailed it. Oh, shoot. Link in the description. Oh, one of you just noticed this. Maybe thousands of you did. When we changed the sponson tip, right? We've now changed, this is not actually the, the, the ride pad. We've now changed the angle of our ride pad, haven't we? You think I care? We were totally going to change it anyway. Remember I told you, wherever these things land really is no big deal. We're going we're gonna to do it my way. All right. Did we do that right? In the back onto there, push it down. Look at that. According to theory, this should fit underneath. And it does, and it fits right into place. One done. At least that part. Gotta cut this. Cut a new slot here. Cut a new slot here. Replicate it on that side. We'll mark our bull nose. Well, we can do our bull nose right now. Let's do that part. Uh, here we go. Remember, trust but verify. Six and seven sixteenths. Gosh. I should make videos of this. Ho, ho, ho. Okay. Can I reach it? Oh, yeah. I'm holding a little pressure on this thing, kind of trying to kind of try to hold everything in place. Make sure that stays put. Can you dig it? There it is. Mark our hole right there. This is going to be awesome. All right, have you guys seen enough? Well, let's, let's talk about where we're at, okay? Let's, let's recap. What you're gonna do now is exactly what you just saw. And you're just gonna have to shape this yourself, okay? You, you saw about how much I took out of there. It's gonna run across here, don't panic. New slots. 
did I show you how to cut those? I, I think I did in one of the other videos. We can do this one real quick. I have an idea. Let's switch this back. I could probably use it. No, let's not. Boy, you got to get you one of these. I'll, I'll put a link to this little gadget here in the video description. You can get it from Amazon. Uh, I've told you before that I do make a kickback on stuff that you buy through my links. So it's helpful if you do. It helps the channel. I'm going to be filthy rich. If, I mean, if I can live to be about 800 years old, I, I think I'll be able to afford a new camera. That's pretty slow. There we go. Oh, ah, almost tried to cut that spot. Oh, we're smoking. <laughs> yeah, I need to order a new one myself. I wonder if I get a kickback if I order off my own link. I'll have to try that. Whoops. That is ugly. <laughs> Remember I told you this isn't super duper critical, okay? You just gotta make the pieces fit. You know, try to make it fit nice. You'll feel really good about yourself. Okay, let's talk about uh, uh, a few things. I've had, uh, uh, let's see, Chris and Edward both asked about where I get my plywood. Remember, we made a whole new floor. You, you, gotta, you gotta buy plywood. I will put links in this video description. And if I think of it, I'll go back and I'll put them in those other videos as well. But, I'm, but I probably won't. So click the links in this description. Uh, I buy, um, uh, oh, somebody else, I think Juan was asking uh, about the thickness of the wood. Uh, the ML Boatworks kit that you buy, if you're going to buy one of these kits, is domestic plywood, which I think is unfortunate. I mean, it keeps the kit prices reasonable, but the surface, you, I don't know if you can, you can't really see it on here. The surface finish of the domestic stuff it is less than spectacular. And it, and it has a beautiful surface. Let's see if that works. What was I saying? Oh, plywood. So the ML Boatworks kits uses, use 1 16th inch ply and 1 8th inch ply. And then they laminate it together to make quarter inch. So you can actually buy, if, if you like these quarter inch thick sponson transoms, and we're gonna change that by the way. Oh my gosh, of course, we'll get to that, don't worry about it. But you can buy a quarter inch uh, light ply or regular ply, this is beautiful. Or, or just get eighth inch and laminate it together, okay? So eighth inch and sixteenth inch, and you got everything you need. Now the eighth is a light ply, and by that, we're talking about the number of, of layers. Can you see this? There's one, two, three. There's, there's a fairly light material in the middle, and then basswood on the outsides, okay? You can also buy eighth inch plywood that I think is five layer. It's a lot stronger, but it's also a lot heavier. Uh, you don't need it. Trust me, you don't need it. Okay, so 16th and 1 8th. When I'm, if I'm building a boat from scratch where I'm drawing my own stuff, I use the finish ply and I use 1.5 millimeter and then I use eighth inch for these interior pieces, but you can also get three millimeter finish ply and I use the 1.5 millimeter or 1 16th for all of the bottom surfaces, except for some on the sponsons, and we'll get to that. And then for the upper deck, I use one millimeter or 1 32nd if you're, if you're using, 1 32nd of an inch bleh, if you're using domestic stuff. Now, I may change that. I, I will probably go to the 1.5 ply, the finish ply on the upper decks as well, just to avoid some of the, uh, the typical cracking that you get over the years. So, okay, does that answer that question? I, I think it does. Somebody else, um, a guy named Tony was asking about uh, some of the, my sponson design. 
and we will, Tony, we will talk about that when we get to the sponsors here. Uh, just my ideas on how that should be done. I lost track of what I was doing as I was so busy talking to you guys. I wanted to see if this fit. Uh, 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 uh. Let's use just one to see if we got the height right. Oh, we do. Excellent. Now it's just a matter of is the width correct? Tight would be cool because then I can just kind of shove it in and it will stay put. And you all will think that I'm super awesome at this. Let's look at it. Remember we've dropped it, so if I'm going to err, I'm going to err that way. Doesn't look very straight. It's probably not. Don't care a whole lot. Oh! Mm-hmm. Mm, mm, mm. Mm, 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 mm. Okay, the easy part's done. <laughs> now you gotta move this one forward and this one forward. You guys can do that on your own. You can do it. Get, uh, get some uh, uh, thin little files like these guys here and you use a, a really a pretty tiny drill bit and you can just drill, 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 no big deal and then go in and file it out. These aren't super critical, man. Again, if your height is, is way up, up higher low, no big deal. You know, you just adjust this. The thing is you want the bottom lined up nice is all. And then this upper part, we got to cut it anyway, so it's no big deal. Okay, so what I want you to do now is go do this. This same process is going to occur right here now. No biggie. We have our response and transom moved. Why does it look like more than an inch? Is anybody yelling at the screen saying you went too far? Now it's one inch. It's one inch. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> uh, move this, move this, move this. Cut your new arc here. Bring it all forward one inch, right? You're cutting this slot. You're rechanging this because you've dropped this down to six and seven sixteenths. That ought to keep you busy. Then we'll meet back here again. We'll do some more. Go to work.